Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with another AI quick tip. And today we are going to take a look at a tool here. It's called Coolors, but we are going to use this tool for the purpose of creating a color palette inside of Midjourney that you can use across a whole bunch of images. So you can have congruity on a sales page, or um, even if you're writing a book or anything else where you have a whole bunch of images you want to have a similar color palette to. So let me just show you over here in Midjourney. We're using the Discord version here of Midjourney. And I just started off in this case here with a picture of this lady right here with a lot of orange and red around her. And then I said, hey, let's add in a color palette. And I just put it in here in text. And I'll show you um, how we generate this in a minute. But I just said color palette with Oxford blue, moonstone, gunmetal, and lapis lazuli. And I did that. And what it did is it gave me the greens and blues, which is what those colors are. R and grays, uh, but it also kept the red in here as well. Now, if I turned it into an actual style reference using that same color palette, and I'll show you again how to do that in a minute, we then got this with very stark colors in the background, but obviously all the colors from the palette, and it got rid of all of the red in the background as well. So let me show you how we do this, and first thing you have to do is you have to start off with your color palette. So let me just open that up and let me just open up a new text document here because we're going to want to grab those color names and let me just change the font size so we can see what I'm doing in here. So now we're going to come into this thing here, coolors.co is the one that I know about. There may be a bunch of different ones to do this, but we're going to start the generator. And the reason why we have to use a tool like this is we need to know the name or the word value or or whatever exactly they call it, I, I forget now, uh, for the color. So you see down here at the bottom, we have the hexadecimal equivalent for the color. Problem is with Midjourney, it doesn't understand hexadecimal, RGBA, HSLA, anything like that. We can only use the color names down here. Now it's gonna be a little small on your screen, but this here says yin, min, blue, teal, naples, yellow, snow, and beaver. Okay, now one of the things you can do is come in here and you can click on this here. It says view shades and you're going to notice you come in here and you change this. We're going to click on that. Now this says satin sheen gold. If we click on it again, pick another one. We have vanilla and so you can change it around. I noticed that like you have to move like at least a couple of shades in there to get the name to change. So this isn't exactly perfect. You can't put in, you can put in an exact, uh, by clicking here, you can put in an exact uh, hexadecimal number, or you can move it around on the screen here. You can do whatever you want um, to pick a different color, but it's not necessarily going to give you an exact name for every single one of the who knows how many million different combinations there are as far as hexadecimal numbers go. So let's say in this case here, we like this green color. So here we got our green color. We're going to say, let's lock this green color. And now we're going to say, okay, we're going to press our key, our space key, and we're going to get some more color. So I'm thinking about building some sort of a sunset. And so we got a black color here. We got this powder blue. I don't know. None of these really are, are tripping me here. So let's go here. And let's just say, let's grab this one here. We're going to lock that one as well. We'll click it again. And we will grab this one. And let's just do one more. And let's see. Okay, we'll grab this yellow one here. So I lock them all, but I didn't really need to. So now what we want to do is we want to grab the names of all these here. So I'm going to see if I can just copy this out. Nope. Uh, secondary info. Don't need that. What I'm going to see here is can I copy this? Nope. And I wasn't able to copy the mouse, so I just quickly typed them into a text element here. And what you're going to see is I put a singular quote around them, and I separated them by commas. And now for the rest of the prompt, we're just going to say something like a color, oops, palette 
with and we're just going to leave it like that and we will cop and now we'll come back over to mid journey and we will put in our slash imagine click on that or just hit enter and we will paste in our prompt and we're also going to say here we want an aspect ratio of uh, two one and then also we're going to use, well, let's use mid-journey six. So I'm pretty sure I have a set as that, but we'll just do V6 and we will hit enter. And you see, if we do this here, we obviously got all those colors to come in, but this is kind of useless. I did one the other day that had the word moonstone in it, and it gave me a bunch of uh, shiny stones and jewelry looking kind of stuff. So we're going to have to modify this a little bit. So we are going to click on our reroll, make sure you have remix mode turned on. And what we're going to say here then at the end of this is, so we got a color palette with those four different colors. and. Then and then we're going to say here, arranged into four vertical colors. And then I'm even going to put in a negative prompt. And we're going to say, no people. Let's just try that. We're going to click on submit and see what happens. And now it took out the people and the school buses and the uh, VW van here, and it basically gave us Crayola crayons because you see the word here, orange Crayola is in there. So we're gonna re-roll this again, and I'm just gonna take out the word Crayola and see if we can get rid of that. Otherwise, it did a really good job of giving me some vertical bands here, and it's not letting me in, now it is. So let's take out the word Crayola and we will re-roll it one more time and we should get a pretty good result now. And this is our result down here, which is perfectly fine because let me show you what some results I had before where I said I used the word moonstone. And if you come in here, you're going to see a lot of this. And these color palettes work just fine as well to give me what I wanted to. And they're kind of interesting pictures as well. But then if we scroll all the way up to the very top, and we come up here, let's click on some of these. I said in here, color palette with those colors. And here, I said here, laid out as four equally sized vertical bars. So kind of play around with what you want to put in there as far as um, get it to give you a layout. But again, this is the kind of color palette I was looking for on this one. Here, we actually got four vertical bars and they got these other things over the top. So what we want to do is now we're going to use, we're going to use this bottom one here. So that is our U3. So let's click on our U3 and we're going to let it open up and then we're going to right click on this image and we should be able to copy the image link in here, copy link right there. Now what we want to do is we want to create another new image. So now we're going to come in here and we're going to just do our imagine again and we're going to open that up and now let's just say, um, let's just say a sunset. And what we could do is t type in or paste in that color palette that we had in the words itself. But as you saw earlier, that didn't work very well. It gave us, it gave us these results here where it combined the red and the blue. But what we want here, and we're, not also, we're also not using an image reference in this case either. We are just using a, um, a style reference. So what we're going to do is we're going to say dash dash. We're going to say S ref and a space and then we're going to paste in the link and you're going to see this big huge long thing when you hit enter it will shorten it up and gives us a nice short little one and it will start running right now so using this here image as a style reference, I got these images down here. Now, one of the things I forgot to do was give it a wider format. So you can see here, it's picking up the bars. We don't really want those bars in there. Uh, here it is not, and it's got some uh, pretty interesting looking images. I wasn't expecting this to really look exactly like a sunset just because of the color palette I was using. So then what I did is I made it a wider format. I said, give us an aspect 
aspect ratio of 2-1, and I said a cinematic still in the style of National Geographic of a sunset, so I put a couple more variables in there, and again, we got a couple of decent looking images, again, with the colors that we chose, they are definitely being reflected in here, so then I said, well, instead of using this one with the boxiness on it, where you're picking up these lines, let's go back to one of these original ones up here, and I use this as a color reference, style reference for our palette, and you're going to see it did equally as well in the images. Here it still gave us this boxy effect, which in some cases that may be something that's pretty cool, but in these other three it did pretty good. That sun's a little anemic there, it's kind of missing the bottom half of it, but otherwise we got a couple of images of sunset. So now what we want to do is to come over here and we're going to grab um, this image right here. So we're going to say this, we're going to copy the image address again. We're going to come down here, we are going to re-roll this one and take out this style reference and put in the more bluish colored style reference. And instead of in the style of National Geographic, let's just say here a cinematic still and let's just make it of a sunset. Let's take that out. And we will then click on submit and see what we get. And we get an absolutely totally different effect here um, because I don't think I put in here, here we got a boxing effect again like that right there which isn't working so well. And I guess we do have the same over here. I thought this was just a horizon but it's not. Uh, but otherwise you definitely see the color difference and that's what we're really looking at here is how this palette will affect things. And so let's just try one more. Let's just re-roll this one more time and then we'll say a cinematic still of, let me see here, of two children uh, playing on a beach, a beach at sunset. And we will leave that same style reference in there and we will click on submit. And this is what we come up with right here. Two kids here, two kids here. I guess there's two of them there. You got two children and an adult, it appears there. But good looking pictures, picked up all the colors as we wanted them. So now let's just do one more thing, just for fun. Let us re-roll this one one more time. But what we wanna do before we do that is we wanna come up here and I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna copy that link and we're gonna change out the coloring on this now. So let's re-roll this now, we will take out this reference right there and we will paste in the other one and we will click on submit. And what's really interesting here, I'll show you the image in a minute, it came back more with the um, almost cartoonish effect of what we had in these other images up here at the top. And I'm just finding that interesting and I, what I'm wondering is, does it have something to do with the words that are in here? Now I have tried in the past putting brackets around these words and doing other things and it actually gave me a worse result than what I was getting with just the singular quotes around Around here. So I'm just wondering if there was something in here, we already took out the word Crayola, something in here that's giving us more of this cartoonish effect because here, again, this does look like a cinematic still, especially this one here. Um, all these here are pretty much uh, cinematic, but this one here, again, this is very much cartoonish, looks, looks much more like a poster, maybe even a movie poster or something. And again, we have the straight lines in here all over the place. I mean, they're very interesting images, but depending on what you want. So you're gonna have to think about how you are picking these color names as well, because they very well could be affecting the end result of your images and what it is rendering. So that is all I have for this video. If you have any questions, just let me know.